Praise the Lord, saints. Truly, I thank God for another opportunity to minister and teach God's word. As I always acknowledge, I acknowledge my pastor, Pastor James Anderson of New Life Apostolic Church. I thank him for the opportunity to teach God's word to the people of God. Truly, I thank God also I want to acknowledge our superintendent, Elder Eugene McWilliams, uh, just for the wonderful job that he has done in supervising, ministering, overseeing our Sunday School Department. On behalf of myself and the teachers, we acknowledge our superintendent, Elder Eugene McWilliams, and we want to say thank you as we begin a new quarter in our Sunday School series. Today, with the help of the Lord, I want to talk about the purpose in creation. And this particular series that we're going to go through a couple of weeks is going to talk about the creation, the rise and fall of man, disobedience, redemption, plan of salvation. So there are many things that myself and the other teachers as well want to cover this week in the lesson. But to begin with, I'm going to read in our lesson, and if you have the new Sunday School lesson, you're also going to need your Bible as well as your Sunday School book to follow along with me. But I want to begin with the focus verse that the author has given us. It's coming from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed unto his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, our lesson text is coming from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 1 through 9, and verses 18 through 25. So, old school, if you have your Bible, please turn with me to Genesis chapter 2. We shall read verses 1 through 9, and then verses 18 through 25. And I thank God as we talk about the purpose, as we talk about other elements of creation, but we begin, but we begin with this quarter with the basic foundation of the purpose of God's creation. So let's start in your Bibles. Genesis chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created man, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed unto his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted an e garden eastward of Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that he pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Let us turn to the 18th through the 25th verse. Genesis chapter 2 beginning at verse 18. And the Lord God said it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. 
And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of the ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man became he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now, in our lesson this week, the title is Purpose of Creation. As I go back and I studied the lesson, there's a lot of beauty in this world today. And so many times I remember growing up that our forefathers, and I thank God for the knowledge that they had, but let's talk about what the word of God says. I want to go back to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. You see, God created this world. God created everything in this world. Satan didn't create the trees, the plants, the mountains, the rivers, the valleys. The earth. Satan did not create any of these things. And yet the word of God says God created. And God created these things for man. And yet how many times do we take the time and say, Lord, I thank you for the mountains. Lord, I thank you for the valleys, for the rivers. Lord, I thank you. But better yet, how many times do we go outside and enjoy the nature of God? You see, man has exploited what God has given us for free. Man wants to charge to visit the parts. Man wants to charge you to visit the wonders of the world. Several years ago, the sisters in our church, and God bless them, took a trip out to the Grand Canyon. And I remember my wife coming back and telling me how much in awe she was at the vastness and beauty of the Grand Canyon. And yet this is something that God had created. And yet man wants to exploit and charge a fee for visiting that which God has created. Now there is one valley, one river, one stone that man has built to establish the Grand Canyon. However, man wants to make a profit. Satan did not create the Grand Canyon. But yet, as we as the people of God, how many of us have said, Lord, I thank you for the beauty of your creation. Lord, I thank you for the mountains for the valleys, for the rivers, for the ocean. Lord, I thank you because it was you that created this. For who? For man. And God created these things for man to enjoy. See, there is no sin in the river. There is no sin in the mountain. And yet for a long time, I remember growing up in the church when you mentioned taking a vacation, see, when I was growing up, vacation consisted of whose church are you going to visit? And you said that you was going to another state? Well, thank God, praise God. Whose church are you going to when you're there? You see, we didn't take the time, and I thank God for the education of our leaders. But saints, God did not create the natural beauty of this world for the unsaved. God created this for man 
to include saved as well as unsaved. That's the beauty. And so when we look at the lesson, and the lesson tells us, where did we come from? See, people have always asked a question about the creation. And our lesson says, and I love this particular portion, it says, people ask the question, where did we come from? How did we get here? When did life begin? Why are we here? People have also come with some rather imaginative answers to their question. From mythological gods fighting the children and craving and their passion to produce accident, the worlds collided and the planets came together and they, boom, we call it the Big Bang Theory. Now, think about this. The world was created because two planets came together and collided, and thus Earth was formed. Okay, I respect our scientists, and trust me, there are many things out there that I truly do not understand. But if we took that approach to life, okay, if we said that Earth was an accident, we still have to answer the question, who put the planets out there for them to collide? You see, somebody had to put them there. You see, man can't answer that question. Man can't answer how old the galaxies are, who made the sun, who made the moon. And yet we do everything we can to rob God of his glory. And yet when we go back and we look at this, man is always trying to rob God. Man doesn't want to give God the glory and the credit for what he's done. This lesson is called the purpose in creation. You see, God created this world. God created life for man. Everything that God created, if you go back in the book of Psalms chapter 8, and I want to take a moment. It's not in your lesson, but I want to take just a moment and, and I want to read that particular portion of scriptures to you. I want to go to the book of Psalms in your Bibles. Psalms, the eighth chapter. And, and I just want to read a portion of this. In your Bibles, Psalms chapter eight. And I want to start reading at verse number one. Oh Lord, oh Lord, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who have set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of the babes and sucking hast thou ordained strength because of thy enemies, thy, thy, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Verse number three is where I want to get to. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon, and the stars, which thou hast ordained. What is man? <laughs> what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou hast visited him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. All that God has created, I have given man a gift. And his author said, what is man that I am worthy of this gift? You see, we're not worthy. God has just blessed us through his grace and through his mercy. But yet, going back to creation, all that God has done and all God that has given us, he has given it to man for man to enjoy. God wants to establish a relationship. Going back to the very beginning of creation, it was all designed so that God and man 
And God through his son Jesus Christ can begin to have a relationship. God knew the plan that man would need in order to be saved. God knew that down the line when he created Adam and Eve that they were sin. God knew this. But he also loved us enough to know that despite the frailty and the faults of man, I still want a relationship with man. I still want man to be here. I want that relationship. See, God is not withholding the beauty of creation for man. As in the book of Psalms, he said, I have given it. I have given this, the beauty. Man has this. And so I look at the lesson. And when we look at man itself, it tells us the relevance of God's word. You see, when God spoke the animals to come into existence, God spoke for the waters to come about. God spoke for the firmament to be divided. It was God's spoken word that caused these things to be created. It was God's spoken word. It was the power of the word that caused these things to come about. But with man, it was different. You see, God didn't speak man to be into existence. God created man. And when I go back into the beginning of what we read in our focus verse, and the Lord God formed man, didn't say he spoke man into existence. God formed man. He formed man out of the dust, out of the ground, and he breathed unto his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's how special God is. We became a living soul. We are the children of God. God takes special care in the creation of man to include woman. But we have to go back and appreciate the beauty of God. We have to understand in the very beginning what it is that God is looking for. He wants a relationship with man. He wants a relationship with us. And in that relationship, he wants us to serve him. You see, if he made us, he didn't make us robots or androids or we can't think for ourselves. But God wants us to serve him and to love him out of a willing and obedient heart. God created us with a mind of a free will to choose. And in that choice, God wants us to choose to love him. I thank God for the creation that he has given us. I thank God for everything that he has given mankind. I thank God for the natural beauties of this world. But when he created man, he created man to be a living soul. Everything else he created, yes. He created the wildlife, the birds, the fish, the animals. He created, he spoke the word and they came into existence. But his special creation was man. Man, where we have life. You see, the world is always trying to duplicate what God has done. I go back many years ago when the movie Frankenstein first came out. What is it they were trying to do? They were trying to create a body. They were trying to create life. You see, Doctors have given scientists a great deal of knowledge. You cannot take away the fact that they can clone things out there. That's a proven fact that they do it. But yet, in order for them to clone a person, an animal, they have to take something that's already in existence and duplicate and copy that. You see, God is the original creator. Well, God has taken nothing and created life. And in that process of creation, he wants us to love him. He wants that relationship. He wants that special love. He wants a relationship with mankind. God is not forcing us to choose to love him. 
But God wants us to love him out of the love in our heart. That's what he's looking for. And I thank God that in the beginning, God created all these theories out here that man want to come up with, all these theories of how the world became into existence. We were created in the image of God. That's the word. Now you can believe everything out here if you want to, but the word of God says that we were created in God's image. Therefore, we weren't created in the image of some monkey or some ape. We weren't created in the image of a frog or a tadpole or some fish out there or whatever it out there. You know, when you go back to watch the movie Jurassic Park and they took a frog egg and made a dinosaur and they took something. No. We were created in the image of God. God took the time to create and form and breathe life into man that we became man and woman we became a living soul a living soul to love worship our Lord and Savior and to have a relationship and that relationship was a relationship out of love and respect and since as I give it a close let's take the time and look at the beauty that God has given us. Let's take the time and look at the mountains. Let's take the time and look at the valleys. Years ago, I had an opportunity to go to upstate New York and I witnessed Niagara Falls. It was something beautiful and yet frightening as I watched it. I've seen it a number of times on television after I've been there. But my mind goes back to when I visited Niagara Falls. I can truly say I was afraid. I saw so much water. And all I could think about was the hand of God that was holding it back. I mean, just a fall that stretched across the United States into Canada. And if you can imagine the volume and power of water, as the water begins to fall down, it sounds like the sound of thunder. And as I saw it, I was saying, oh my God, it is so beautiful. And yet at the same time, Lord, I'm so afraid. You see, Satan didn't create that. Man didn't create that. Take the time, saints. Take the time. Get out there and see what God has created for us. The creation that God has made for man. As we look at the lesson, it says the purpose in creation. God created the goodness and the good things of this world for us to enjoy. Saved and unsaved. As I close, saints, let us enjoy the beauty of God's creation. Amen.